Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So, as you know, because in the last few videos I've went on about it, I've been taking some gel prints and trying to make some abstract paintings with them by using the gel print as a starting point. Here's one I'm, I've just started. I've just been adding soft pastel and gesso to it. But a bit of the issue I have is I need to use slightly better paper or glue the gel prints onto better paper to have something to work with. I've got out my big pad of watercolour paper and I just thought I'm going to use a few of these to do some black and white gel prints and see how I got on with that. Okay, so I've brought out some of my stencils and some of my kind of collagraphs that I've made. Black and white acrylic paint and my brayers. So we're just keeping it simple today. Okay, so what I was thinking of was kind of some stencils first. Now I'm liking shapes that I can pull together to make other shapes. So what I've been doing is some of the shapes I've been blocking out as in taking lots of wee shapes. So I'd maybe I could either use all the wee shapes in that or I could make it just one big shape or make it a partial shape. And then I'm just going to take one of these plates to remove the excess paint. There's one there. This is a bit thick and then this is a bit stiff so I don't get the best print off it. But I'm still going to try. And then this one here is part of a sequin dress that I just wrapped in tissue paper to... sort of protect it a bit so I can use it multiple times and plus the fact when I cut the dress the sequin started falling off it's going to be easier to push the gel plate into this collagraph because it's so thick in one area but not in the others but because the card's stiff, I can't manipulate it, but I can manipulate the gel plate. Oh, look at my stencil mark on that. Okay. So I don't think... A lot of here hasn't picked up, but we've got some. I mean, I could pick this straight up onto the paper, but it's too dry. I'm going to need to put a layer over it. And plus, I kind of want that. I'll show you. I want this kind of look so it's still very grainy and imperfect um i made this with polystyrene stamps but i've got a polystyrene plate in here i might use it's got a bit of yellow on it but we're not doing that today i love gel prints i have to use them in everything don't i I need to put more paint on. I'm 
there. These have got a kind of smooth side and a, a textured side, so I'm just going to use the smooth side. I've given it about not quite five minutes. There's a lot there to work with. I don't necessarily want lots of little shapes though, because sometimes you find an angle in some, a big shape. Good starting point. Right, so this is just stencils and sort of like netting that came around onions, wee bits of material, and this is just a corrugated cardboard that I've put it on. And remember now it doesn't quite fit. So I've actually got some texture paste plates that I've made. And this, this is just stencils. I'm going to put that on as well at the side. And then I'm going to turn it around. pull most of it off but you can see some indication of the shapes okay there's a lot going on in here like this from the Collagraph because although they're ill-defined there's a lot of hidden shapes going on underneath the obvious ones. Right we need to let it dry. Okay. Okay so I'll do a wee chat at the end about how I kind of We'll use them as a starting point. Mm, I've maybe left a bit much on this one. Never mind. Oh, no, that's too old. Sorry. I'm entering them random, but that's just too much like a person. Even though you do kind of see humans in a lot of what you do, I just don't want it to be quite so. I've 
made this sort of texture plate. I've got a few of them. I'm going to try using these. I just backed them onto cards. Well, I used the cards to make them. I don't know how these lacked actually I've never used I made them to use in the gel plate and then never used them actually made these with stencils I just put down the stencil and laid the texture paste that's I think that's actually Mod Podge that clear shiny nice oh I'm pleased with that look at those lights Oh, that's nice. I know it's right in the middle, but honestly, I could just chop it down if I feel. But there's other ways to deal with it. We've got this right in the middle. That wasn't my intention. But you're supposed to just, for this first layer, it's like when you're just putting random marks on the paper, you're just, you're doing it without thinking and that's what's happened here. Apart from when I took a head off the person. Okay, we're dry. I thought the amount I'd put out there was excessive. Turns out it wasn't. Right. Oh, look at this. It's dried a bit, so it's cracked. I'll let this one on probably near 10 minutes. I like this. Even though that's in the middle, this is more or less halfway. <laughs> Something about it. Anyway, onwards and upwards. I'm sure we just used that one, but... Here we are. Oh, I just used that one and the other day I made one that's with that. Mm. I put this on tissue paper when it was still wet and I'm really annoyed because it's stuck to it it's like a little man in there but he's here to stay right I've pulled out this is another of my children's board book collagraphs that's um, corrugated cardboard string um not sure what else there's bits and pieces on that but it looks like a skeleton i think this is jump rings that you use in jewelry making on chipboard just like the back of your drawing pad and then i've put um, aluminium foil tape over the top of it i like how this reacts
This is just some squares, packaging tape. I feel like I've overthought when I'm placing these. This is actually a bit of sandpaper, fine sandpaper that I've put aluminium foil on top of. That's glass bead texture gel with some mud podge, I think, or matte medium, something. Let's do you diagonal so you cover it. I should really put a heavy book on top of these to press them down. Only, it's only touched it a little bit, but it's only in a small space anyway. Let's see, I like that effect there. I like the jump rings a lot, but there's a lack of randomness to it. But I was just experimenting. And my wee guy, because the tissue papers picked most of it up. We've got ourselves another kind of L shape here. Do you know, I was using this in the Big Shop Plus as a kind of, as a sort of, alternative printing press so that's actually got printing ink on it which is transferred on oh I, I need to do a video with my printing inks on the gel plate as well it'll be interesting to see how they are in comparison to the acrylic i've used them without making a video before and i found them to be particularly stiff um, but I actually added some kids poster paint <laughs> I liked what I got I like having a mixture of the sharp lines and the kind of non-sharp, the wonky and I like having a mixture of the kind of distressed and the kind of block, the kind of partial shapes with the full shapes. I'm just waiting for this to dry, I think a wee bit there maybe. Okay, let's have a look. Last one. Oh, I'm not putting this one down because it covers too much. Just going full on busyness on this one. So this is a polystyrene kind of color. I've just cut into that a bit to give it a bit of something going on there and just scratched into here. That's texture paste and that is kind of scratching as well down here. I need to work out where the actual collagraph is. Right, we're going to have to turn this. I've got hair in here that wasn't in here before. Unbelievable. I 
I really don't like sitting it in the acetate because it kind of pulls at the gel plate. But the collagraphs can be quite inflexible and have various heights. So it's easier to push the gel plate into it. Because that's got a bend. Probably should cut this one in half so that we can get more of this. Never mind. This is quite a dark one. That's going to take a while to dry right there. I think we're dry enough. I'm going to start at this side and just kind of try and pull it over gently. really quite dark overall isn't it so for this one i would probably have a sort of separation here um these two are fairly similar shapes and these have got similar slants to these i also think value wise we've got quite a separation here we've got this kind of area but it's dark and then this is quite light I think that one's going to be, um, that one's got a bit of a head start on it almost. Now this one here's got really quite a dark area that kind of pulls up through here diagonally. Maybe more or like that. You could go either way. Um, but there's definitely these two I would probably end up grouping together and sort of starting from there. The other thing about these is, I'll show you this one. So I've used water soluble oil paints on top of the soft pastels and gesso, which is something I've just started using. I've never used an oil paint before, but you can see there that I've just been using thin layers. So you can see the kind of colors of the gel print still there. You can see texture that I've put in place. And also see these grainy marks. I mean, that's hard to replicate, you know, freehand. So this netting here, this kind of, that shape is, you know, I could pull that out in bigger shapes. This one here is, this is the one that actually interests me the most. We've got very solid black and very solid white. And we've got it in different areas. We've also got this middle cross that we're going to have to pull up, probably, and one way or the other. But then this here, these, these two are quite fairly similar, like with the black and white. But this one's very... I don't want to think too much about what I'm going to do with this one actually I'd like to just see where it goes and so this one here there's apart from this down the middle there's actually very little straight edges I know these are straight but they've got a curve in them as well 
we've also got these really well defined circles fairly well defined squares these lines so yeah this is interesting as well we've got a well defined kind of light area and a well defined dark area so that polystyrene plate was too bendy even when i put the gel plate on top of it so i mean we do have textured background and with a thin layer over that you know that will be interesting i hate the word interesting i say it all the time i don't want to i want to look at a painting because i want to look at it and i want to kind of work out the story and interesting is such a boring word to describe it i think there's a bit of depth in this one as if they're kind of moving somewhere i feel this one works better this way to be honest and it's this this is over directing us I would say that line, though, is because it's got, yeah, because look, it's kind of almost framed, isn't it? We've got this line here, this here, and we've got this going along here, and plus these two. It is, it's, it's like it's been framed. Hmm. Okay. This could be interesting as well. They're all very interesting in a non-boring way. So anyway, this will be my first time doing it on the black and white. I've always just been using, like here on this one, I've still got a, that water-soluble oil paint. It takes like 24, 48 hours, depending on the thickness of the layer, to dry, um, to be touched dry. But I've still got a lot of the gel print showing. And here I've actually, there was a very faint, impression of this sort of insect stencil I made so I've just subtly well what I think subtle subtly gave the suggestion of it being there without making it overpowering but yeah I think it works with parts of the gel print shown because it's a very different texture and then the soft pastel texture as well is more all around the focal point area I love this I feel like I've made progress with this painting. It's funny how you you do end up, you go into phases, don't you? And then something just clicks in your brain and you're away down another path. I hope you enjoyed and thanks very much for watching. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.